this question here doesn't tell you, hey, um, like they, they will say solve. That will be the actual wording of the question. They will just say, here's an inequality, and they'll just say solve it. And um, it's a bit funny that you might think, like, what does this, why does this belong in a topic called graphing techniques? Yeah. Like it hasn't asked me to graph, okay? Mm -hmm. The reason why it's in this topic is because, like, far and away the best way to solve this is actually by graphing, yeah. Um, there are ways to solve it without graphing, mm -hmm. and they suck. <laughs> like, yeah. they, they can, they're long, they're confusing. Um, you get an answer and you're like, is it right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, right. It's highly unreliable, okay? So what we're gonna do is, like our mechanism for this is, um, is two steps, okay? Number one, we're, gonna, we're going to create a graph of um, the left-hand side of this uh, inequality, okay? Um, that x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x, uh -huh. we're gonna get a picture of that. And then the second thing is, we'll interpret that graph um, on the basis of this inequality, okay? And they're two quite separate steps, okay? So uh, let's have a go at step one. Um, that thing on the left-hand side, if I just took that and I said let y equal to that, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, let's try our best to work out what this thing looks like, okay? Um, when you graph, it's always helpful, like in our previous questions, to factorize. So mm -hmm. can you tell me, are there any common factors here for um, these three terms? X? Yeah, I can just take an X out okay. of the whole thing, so let's do that. Um, put an X out the front, what does that leave you with inside um, the brackets? X squared plus 5X plus 6. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, now once you've taken out that x, the thing inside the brackets is a quadratic, mm -hmm. so you can factorize again. Can you help me work out, um, I'm looking for a the pair partners. of numbers, yeah, yeah, the partners, right? Um, they add to, sorry, that's a very misleading number. two and three. Very good, so two and three will add to five, they'll multiply to six, so I'll get this. Okay, now I wonder if you can remember, um, what's the point of factorizing? Why does Factorizing help us graph. You can find the intercepts. Perfect, exactly. So, um, which intercepts, by the way? Because there's so there's going to be an intercept at x equals zero. Yeah. Um, x equals negative two. Perfect. And x equals negative three. Wonderful. So, um, we factorized in x, so you get x intercepts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's a lot of information. Why don't we start to draw a set yeah. of axes and yeah. we start start to get a sense of what this thing looks like? Okay. Um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and draw some straight lines here. Oops, sorry, I know it's not fair. Um, do you have a ruler on you, by the way? I do. Yeah. Like, watch me not use it. <laughs> um, I will say, um, like, to, yeah, <laughs> especially when, like, um, you know, if you're using your graph as part of your working yeah. for the answer, you're like, my graph's got to be decent enough to say, um, hey, well, look, is my, look is my, look at my, look at my knee working, right? Yeah. Okay, so. Um, we've got a good enough um, set of axes to work on here. I'm going to take the information we just got mm -hmm. and put it onto put it on. a graph. Yep. Yeah. So um, I've got an intercept at x equals zero is what you told me. Yeah. Um, I want to have a decent scale on this, so I'm going to go negative one. There's negative two, mm -hmm. and then I go one more over. That's negative three. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I will just label those points zero, um, negative two. Move it over a little bit. Negative two, and then negative three. Is that okay? Cool. Yep. Um, I've got x-intercepts. I feel like I should get y-intercepts. Yeah. How do I find y-intercepts? Let y equal zero. Let y equal oh, zero? Let x equal zero. Let x equal zero. Very good. Yeah. So if I let x equal zero, mm -hmm. um, I, I often say to find y-intercepts, just so I don't get confused. Um, to find y-intercepts, I'll let x equal zero. Mm -hmm. What do you get out of y? Sorry, I'm just... Yeah, you're fine. Take your time. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That's all right. I, I sort of raced ahead. Okay. Um, have a look at our equation for the y over here. One? Yeah, the original one, okay. right? When you put x equals zero into this guy, what happens? You're getting just a bunch of zeros. You're getting a whole bunch of zeros, right? Yeah. Y equals zero. You're like, wait a second. I already found the y-intercept <laughs> because I passed through the origin, right? Oh. So you're like, ah, oh, jokes, you already found it, okay? <laughs> now, that, that actually happens quite okay. frequently, honestly. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, no, no. I, I, I was the one who asked you the question. Um, but it is worth noting, like, if you don't pass through the origin, you're going to pass through the y-axis somewhere else. Point, yeah. so, so you still have to go through that process, so I thought it was worth just making sure. Yeah. Okay, good. Now you're like, uh, it, what, is that it? Like, I feel like I need more information about yeah. this, right? It's a polynomial. Mm -hmm. Polynomials don't have asymptotes of any time. There's no breaks yeah. in the graph. Um, so I need to work out, well, it's gonna be, there's gonna be a smooth curve that goes through this, but I don't know how to 
wiggle. Yeah, it's gonna, where it's going to wiggle around, yeah. okay? So one of the things that will help with all kinds of graphs, um, whether they're polynomials like this, mm -hmm. or those rational functions or exponentials, mm -hmm. is I want to work out what's happening on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the graph, okay. right? So if I put in, say for example, like some ridiculously large negative number, okay? Like say negative 100. Right? Why would you do that? Um, well, I, why would I do that? And the answer is, I want to know what's going on. Like, this shows me what's happening in the middle, but I want to know what's happening on either side oh, of that. Jokes. Okay, right? yeah. okay, so x equals negative 100 is very far in that direction. Yeah. Okay. Now you've got a calculator there, I can see. Um, I wonder if you can put into your calculator, substitute in, um, negative 100 cubed okay. plus 5 lots of negative 100 squared. And just be careful with when you input this, because um, let me just actually put some work in here. When x equals negative 100, y is going to equal negative 100 cubed plus 5 lots of negative 100 squared. And I just want you to be cautious with your brackets because yeah. if you put the minus sign in the wrong spot, the calculator will think you mean something else, right? Yeah. So when you put that in, what do you get? Ah. That's okay. Take your time. Oh, it's really gross. Um, negative what is it? 9... Just read the digits for me. 950600. That's a lot of numbers. Okay. <laughs> so you're like, wait a second, some huge negative number, yeah. right? Which is to say, like, x equals negative 100 is to the left. Okay. y equals negative 950600 is like rock bottom, right? It's a yeah. very, very large negative value. Okay. Yeah. Now, I think you can see without even testing it, if I make x equal positive 100, it'll be a positive. It's just going to be some huge value, right? Like, something big, okay? Because you're like, oh, I'm going to cube 100. Yeah. And then I'm going to square 100. Like, it's just going to get massive, yeah, yeah. right? So it's going to be very big. So in other words, what we're getting is, on the left-hand side, which is negative x, you get very low values, uh, very negative values of y. And then on the right-hand side, you get very positive values. Oh, okay. Do you see that? Yep. Now, why these are helpful to me is, I'm like, oh, I have to, yeah, I have to come from the left down the bottom. And eventually, I've got to go to the right at the top. Okay. Okay. And then I've got to meet these three points in the middle, uh -huh. right? So what's this going to look like? Well, I've got to come up to that um, that intercept over there, right? See that? I've got okay. to come up to meet the intercept. Now, um, you don't need to draw this because it's going to be wrong, but clearly, I can't just keep on marching up, right? No. Yeah. I've got to come back down mm -hmm. to the intercept. Um, we have lang we have calculus language for this, right? What is there going to be between negative three and negative two? It's got to, it's got to turn around, okay. right? Yeah. So it's a turning point. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what you were going on. Yeah, like, is okay. There something I'm to say? Okay, <laughs> so there's a turning point. I, I drew that really badly. So there's a turning point right there. Um, this question didn't ask us where that turning point was, so I'm okay. not going to find it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, just like before, I can't just keep on going down here. You've got to curve again. I've got to come back up. So there's another turning point, right? So it, it turns back up towards zero. Okay. And then where am I going to end up? Matching yeah, I've got to go meet that spot on the right hand side. I'm actually, I have no idea where I'm actually gonna, my line's gonna go. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And that's the graph. Okay. okay. Um, now, I will point out, I'm looking at yours and mine. One of the differences between yours and mine is, like, it's, they're very similar. But I want you to look closely at the very left hand side and the very right hand side. They're too straight. Yeah, your graphs kind of level off. They kind of become like straight, straight lines, lines, which they are not. Okay. Um, you, you remember how we got this, like, ridiculously negative number here? Mm -hmm. So it really is very steep, okay? Yeah. So that's why you can see mine gets steeper and steeper forever. You gotta watch out for that because remember how I said, shape really matters. Yeah. Okay. All right, take a breath. Uh, remember I said there's two big steps to this. Oh no. Number one, <laughs> no, I, I promise, you've actually done the hard one, okay? Uh, Number one was graph, we've done that. Okay, that's why it's in this topic. Number two, we need to interpret this, right? You're like, I've got a graph, but what does it mean? Okay, right. so come back to the original question. Um, here's the original question up here. Right, um, you've got this graph which we've just done. Yep. And then the rest of the question, which we've just kind of ignored up to this point, is uh, is lesser than zero. Now, for graphs, what that means is when are you below the axis? Okay. That oh. graph that we just drew. When is it? When is it underneath? Okay. Now I hope you can see there's two parts of this graph that are underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Can you highlight them for me? What are those parts? This yeah. Like the beginning. Yeah, the beginning part right here on the left. And then like the. And this little this little middle bump here, right? Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now um, those are the two sections I'm after. 
What I need is the x values that give me those two spots. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. In fact, it's worth writing. Um, what I want is, the solution is, what x values, what x values um, correspond to those two sections, right? Correspond to um, these parts of the graph. What x values correspond to these parts of the graph? Okay. So, have a look. Um, looking at the graph, you know, you the first thing you said was, oh, it's the, the, the beginning part, right? Yeah. So, it's like everywhere over here, everywhere over here is, is for x values is good. Mm -hmm. At what point do I start? What x value? At the value? three. At the three. three sorry. Right there, negative three, very good. Mm -hmm. So, everything to the left of negative three is fine. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say there's negative three, and then I go all the way to the left, like so. Oh, what are we doing? It's so that's gross. x is less than negative 3, like okay. so, okay? So those are the x values that give you that, that part over there. Mm -hmm. I also need x values that give me that middle section. What are the x values that sort of fence that in? So negative 2. Negative 2. And 0. 0, right. And then I want between those two spots, mm -hmm. so in here, like so. So I would say uh, negative 2. Um, is less than x, which is less than zero. Okay, so you start from negative two and then you go all the way up to zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that right there in green, um, the, the first one or the second one, that's the answer. That's the inequality's solution. Okay. Oh, okay. So cute. you're done. Now, I will just say, and this is calling back very, very old knowledge, so if you can't remember it, I will help you. Um, that's how you would write the um, answer in. Um, inequality notation. Yep. Do you remember there was this thing called interval notation that we learnt like very early last year? So it's a while ago, okay? So it's a bit sneaky, so I'm just going to remind you what it looks like. <laughs> it takes these same numbers, right? <laughs> yeah, there's like okay. brackets and stuff like yeah. that. So what we would say is, um, on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. where do you start from? And the answer is from negative infinity. And then uh, going from the left, where do you stop? We already said this value. Negative three. Negative three, right? Like so. Uh huh. Okay. And then you, you then say, oh, okay, well, then I have another one. And it's from negative two um, all the way to zero. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and then we would say um, the word for, the symbol for or is this uh, U looking symbol oh, here, yeah. which, means, um, uh, which means union. Okay? Okay. 